Hello and welcome back and today I want to show you guys how to import your photos from Google Photos and from Google Drive onto your Synology NAS with DSM-7. Now for those that are already um, sort of watching the channel or subscribed, you'll know that I've already shown you how to do this utilizing DSM-6.2. I even made an article here on NAS Compares where I talked a lot about the advantages and indeed the disadvantages of moving from Google Photos to a NAS. I've gone through lots of the details, but during the course of that video, I didn't actually show you guys the best way to do it. And afterwards, I made another follow-up video where I went through exactly how to do it on DSM 6.2 on a Synology NAS. I'm going to be covering each of the NAS brands in the very near future. But today, I wanted to touch on DSM 7 because although it's in beta, DSM 7 is going to be launched in some of the, I believe, the first quarter, maybe early into the second quarter of 2021. So consequently, it's going to be useful to know how to do it in DSM-7 anyway. So I thought I would touch on that in this video, go through each of the steps, and hopefully this video will be useful to you guys later in the year. I'm recording this in January of 2021. It's super cold right now, and I hope it's warm wherever in the world or whenever in the world you are watching this. But... Let's go through a few disclaimers. So first and foremost, it's worth highlighting that I am using a NAS that I've already set up. This is a 1019 Plus, and I've already installed Synology Photos. That is the amalgamation of PhotoStation and Synology Moments. It's already got a bunch of albums already on it, and all of my photos are in the Photos album of the NAS. I've already put them all in there, and I've already installed the application. So all of that's already been done. So again, to get to this point in the video, you are going to have to make sure you've got Synology Photos installed, and it's ready to rock. I've already done videos on that, so I do recommend you check those out, and I'll try to get them linked in the description. But... Today we're going to talk about Synology Photos, and we are going to be also talking about how to import your photos from Google Photos and from Google Drive. Now, for those that aren't aware, with your um, mobile phone, your Android device, your tablet, your whatever, you get that free area of storage, that 15 gig by default. You can pay um, uh, subscription service prices and get a little bit more. I believe it scales up to 100 gig, 200 gig, and 2 TB. But ultimately, all your photos will be in one of two locations. If all of your photos taken from your phone were backed up from the official stock Android app, just known as um, Photos, but it's actually Synology Photos, then all of your photos will be in this preset area, Google Photos. Just Google, Google Photos. Now, technically, Google Photos is not the same as Google Drive. They use the same space. They're both based on the same space, registered with the same Google account, but they have different entry points, technically, with where that data lives. So I'm going to show you guys two of the best ways to export data out of there and onto your NAS, or to import it from the cloud. So the first method we're going to use, I'm going to, I think this is the most interesting of the two. The reason being that it actually helps you understand how to migrate data away from the bulk of Google services and onto your NAS, calendar, mail, uh, contacts, and more, and that is Google Takeout. Google Takeout, um, a few years ago, it was introduced in a more formal setting, is the ability to download all of the data that you have given to Google in each of its different forms, from Chrome to Calendar to Mail to Contacts to Drive to Photos, even some of the fitness and home AI stuff. So if you want to have some idea about what Google has maintained in terms of data that you've synchronized with them, it's a great way to find out. But it's also a great way to download all of that data in one big chunk. So if you want to have your entire photo collection, just scroll down on Google Takeout. And again, just make sure you're logged in with the Google account. This is the throwaway um, NAS Compare one that we use for this channel. Just log in, go to googletakeout.com, and then scroll down and find Google Photos. Now, there is one for Google Drive as well, if you want to download the full area of cloud storage. But for now, we're just going to go with Google Photos. Now, bear in mind, the size of this folder is going to be heavily dependent on how many photos you've taken. Now, the reason I highlight that, just to go on a tiny tangent, is because although you may not be aware, or you may well be aware, because this is the whole reason you're watching this, but as of June 2021, 
Google is no longer allowing users to have unlimited photo backups to Google Photos. Till then, much like it's been in the last few years, you could upload compressed versions of all the photos on your phone to this area, Google Photos, without it counting towards your overall storage. It didn't count at all. And the result was that you could store thousands of photos on Google Photos without them taking up the space. And it meant you could free up the room on your phone, delete it from your phone, and carry on taking photos. Great stuff. But after June, these photos, once they're uploaded, will start to take up that cloud space. And once that cloud space is full, it will start... It will, will a lot of your Google services will cease to function until you start deleting. I'm talking about things like Gmail. I'm talking a lot about the day-to-day -day education services, the day-to-day -day work um, platforms that rely on you having space in your drive. So it's one of the main reasons why you want to remove photos from Synology Photos, uh, sorry, Google Photos and onto your NAS, because otherwise you're going to have to start paying those subscription fees for that space. Now, the reason I'm telling you this long-winded story is because when you go to the Google Takeout option and you go to download your Google Photos, bear in mind that although your Google Drive might say 11 or 12 gig or 15 gig because you've been uploading random photos from Expos throughout the course of your last few years, yes, that right, that's me, your Google Photos account might be three, four, five, six years of backed up photos. They might be compressed, but it might be an absolutely huge amount of data. Now, for the you know, for the sake of this video and brevity, I've just uploaded 27 photos to this disposable uh, Google Photos album. Just some old photos from a night out several years ago. But a number of you are going to quite literally have tens if not hundreds of thousands of photos stored on that google takeout photo album and it's very important that you know that this could take a long time once you've ticked google photos on the takeout option scroll to the bottom and click next step from here it will ask you if you want to make this a regular occurrence so if you like you can have it that google takeout will send you a download link to download um, photos from a certain period of time over a course of the year, such as once every two months. I'm going to go for one export. I'm going to have it as a zip file, and that's important. You'll see why in a bit. And I'm going to have it as if it exceeds two gig, it will do it as a separate download file. Now, that's important because if you have, for example, five, six, seven gig of data in your Google Photos album, if you download it as a six, seven, or eight gig file from Google, there are some file systems that will not be able to use it. Some of them, such as FAT32, will limit you. I think at around 3.7 gig file size, and some software will not allow you to use a file size that is larger than two to three gig. So it's important that you break it down into individual files. From here, click Create Export, and then it will begin processing these photos into a downloadable form. Once again, the amount of time this takes will be heavily dependent on the number of photos, hence why it highlights this can take hours or days. You don't have to keep this page open. You will receive an email to the associated email with this Google account to allow you to download this file. In my case, because it's such a small number of photos, it's incredibly quick. I've already downloaded this album in advance, and if we go into my downloads folder, we can see that I've downloaded that zip file and I've already extracted it. If you aren't already aware to extract a zip file, right click and just extract it, whether you're using WinRAR or if you're using Windows or Mac or whatever platform, or even Android, of course, is own built-in extraction tool. Inside this album will be your photos. They will be broken down into the albums that were present on your photos um, app, but often they will be broken down into months and years. So rather than albums having titles, such as My Last Holiday or Christmas with the Family, they will be broken down into years or months. In my case, those photos I uploaded earlier are simply in one album called Photos from 2018 and another called Photos from 2017. From here, what you need to do is head over to your Synology NAS, Go into File Station, 
which is the file management app, and from here find that Photos album that would have been created when you installed Synology Photos. And simply go to the folder, the downloaded folder, highlight the two albums, or in my case two, in your case you'd have lots of albums, and then you can drag and drop these two albums directly into that folder. It will then upload those files directly to the NAS. Now, it will take an extra minute or so, but as it uploads these, and again, heavily dependent on the size of the files you're uploading and the size of the albums, once they start being uploaded, the system will begin to index those files. So in Synology Photos right now, we can see on the left-hand side of the screen, there's just those six albums. But I don't think it will happen straight away. If we refresh that link, it will begin, as you see, to list these albums. And as you can see, those albums have now been presented. And the good news is that the minute they're uploaded in that manner, they're also going to be present for you to use a lot of the AI services, allow you to share the files, move them to your shared space, and more. But it's still excellent that you're able to upload those files in this manner. Now, a number of you may not wish to do it in this manual way. Perhaps you don't want to do the whole download from Google Takeout, then upload. There's a lot of hands-on stuff there. For those of you that don't want to have to do it in this manual fashion, the much quicker way to do it, although less precise, is to go to My Drive, or the Google Drive album. Now, as mentioned, this is a different access point to your photos. This is when you've got all of your general files and folders laid out in your shared drive. What you need to do is head back into your Synology NAS and download the tool Cloud Sync. Now, files and applications, sorry, applications and services from Synology do change. So don't be surprised if there's a bigger and better tool to do this on the horizon. But for now, this is still an excellent way to do this. Once you open up the app, it will allow you to browse cloud services that are currently supported. Now for this application, we're gonna to go to Google Drive. Select Google Drive and click Next. It will then want to authenticate this NAS with this Google account. It may ask you to verify it, but in my case, because I've already done it previously in preparation for this video, it's going to ask if we can allow these to be synchronized without me needing to verify. But don't be surprised if it asks you to verify that the Google Drive is allowed to synchronize with the NAS. Click Allow. It will then um, ask you to re uh, about redirecting information. And now we can see that it will allow us to create the Google Drive connection. So the first thing we can do is name the connection. But again, we don't know if it's going to be permanent. I'm going to leave it as Google Drive. Next. Select the folder in the NAS that you want the contents of this backup to go into. In my case, I want it to go into the Photos album, as we can see there. Click Select, and then it will ask us to select the folder or folders on the um, Google Drive space that we want to synchronize. So in my case, I'm going to go with the DS920 Photos album here. Now, I could go for all of them. I've got lots of photo albums here, but I want to keep this nice and brief for this video. But bear in mind that you can send huge amounts of information and you can even go for the root folder if you choose. Alternatively, you can create a new folder if you like. But for now, I'm going to select this 920 Photos album from last year when a user kindly sent me some photos of their 920 Plus. And then we click Select. And from here, we say, what kind of synchronization do we want? Bidirectional is, in, uh, as the name suggests, in both ways. Anything added to either side, be it the folder on the NAS or the folder on the cloud, will be synchronized. Download remote changes only will mean that files that are uploaded to the uh, Google Drive will then be updated, but not the other way around. Finally, upload local changes only will be if you upload a folder or file to the um, DS920, uh, the sorry, Photos album on the NAS, then it will be uploaded to the cloud. For now, I'm going to go bi directional, but bear in mind it may differ depending on how you want this export to happen and if you want this to be a regular occurrence with a Google Drive. And that means in some users' cases, you might use the Google Drive 
and the Google Photos app to back up photos on the go, but you use the NAS to synchronize them on a regular basis. You can also enable consistency checks that will verify that the photos aren't broken and re make repairs using the file system where appropriate. You can even encrypt the data to make sure that transmission from the beginning and the end is kept nice and safe. And you can even enable a schedule that makes sure that this synchronization is either as changes happen or it can happen at times of the day when the NAS is going to be used by fewer people and therefore allow you to conserve resources. For me, I'm gonna let this carry on doing it as changes happen. I'm then gonna click next. I'm then going to verify that, uh, this chain, uh, that this synchronization is okay. And as you can see, it's now going to synchronize with that cloud service. As we can see, what will happen now, it's synchronizing with it, it's uploading files, and now if we make our way back into the File Station app, there'll be a new folder in the Photos Arena, and these files are now being added to the Photos album. And once again, these are all going to be added to Synology Photos. Photos are being added, and there you go. That is another way to synchronize the cloud and your NAS in order to carry photos over from Google services onto your NAS. Now, it's worth highlighting once again that there is absolutely no harm in having both the cloud and the NAS in your storage architecture. It allows you to add another layer of security to your backup systems and also sometimes you may be in a location where it's easier to synchronize your data with cloud services than it will be with a remote NAS that may have stricter security policies. In that case it's always handy to be able to back up and synchronize your cloud services with the NAS in the background and certainly with the date approaching in a few months of Google not allowing you to have infinite photo backups, it may be the perfect way to reinvent the ecosystem of your data and make sure your photos are backed up. And also remember that the Synology applications also allow you to directly upload from your mobile device to the NAS, completely removing Google Cloud from the process if you choose. But nevertheless, this has been how to carry your photos over from uh, Google Photos and Google Drive and onto your Synology NAS with DSM-7. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Click like if you have and subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.